Howdy champs! My name is Mohit and guys today I want to show you how to make a mini mp3 player in uh, Flash and Action Script 3 guys. Uh, the first thing guys that I'm going to do is um, let me open up my uh, folder where I'm actually storing all my assets. Now this folder called uh, music is actually what is storing all the assets. Let me open it up for you. Alright guys. Out here you can see that there are three mp3 uh, music clips that I'll be playing. They are located externally guys. This is the first one. Alright. Uh, that's kalimba.mp3. Um, this is the second one guys. And this is the third one. So there are three, uh, you know, uh, music clips that I'll be playing. And I'll be calling them uh, from inside Flash. Basically, guys have a look out here. This is the flower file and this is the resultant swift file all right and the assets one two and three are actually not inside the flash library but are placed externally so basically we'll be playing external sounds so in this tutorial we'll see how we can you know play external sounds as well as um, guys i'm going to give it away to you the mp3 player this has you know it's, it's a zipped file it's a 7z file where i've uh, combined these five files one two three four and five all right i'm giving it away uh, i know the script is a little complex uh, so uh, there may be so many of you guys who wouldn't actually want to break their heads into understanding the script but would just need the script uh, it's a giveaway guys you can actually download it from my website uh, http colon forward slash forward slash quality lessons dot net forward slash downloads the link will be there in the description guys all right Anyways, before I actually start explaining the action script to you guys, uh, let me click on this uh, Swift file and show you how things actually look. So here goes. It's actually a mini MP3 player, guys. Uh, you can see that we have the play button highlighted, but just as the play button is highlighted, you can actually see the mute and the stop buttons disabled. All right. So many of the buttons get disabled and enabled. Uh, they also change their labels from time to time. Uh, some of the buttons may get uh, emphasized from time to time. So, uh, you know, th the moment I hit the play button, guys, it's actually going to change the label. It's going to show up as next, not play. All right. So, uh, let me show you a publish preview. I'm going to hit the play button now, guys. You can see the mute and the stop button get enabled the moment I hit the play button, right? That's the next uh, music clip, guys. That's the next one. And that's the first one. That's uh, the moment I hit the mute button, guys. You can actually see that unmute shows up. The label changes. All right. And the moment I hit the stop button, guys, you can actually see the stop as well as the mute button get disabled. Okay. Let me hit the play button once again. These two buttons get um, enabled once again. So guys, as you saw that uh, I'm able to, uh, you know, play a series of uh, music clips. There are three in number. So uh, you can go on hitting the next button and the next uh, music clip starts to play. The button, uh, you know, the buttons get uh, enabled, disabled uh, uh, from time to time, uh, depending on the situation. All right. So uh, let's understand the script, guys. I'm going to just breeze through the script, guys. Seriously. Uh, it's it's a little long, it's a little lengthy, it's a little complex, and unless and until you understand the sound class properly, which is a little complex, I would admit admit that. Uh, so I'm just gonna breeze through it. Uh, you <laughs> you see, uh, you can actually make use of the script in just in case uh, it's it's a little bit too much for you, right? Just in case. So let me open up the uh, flower file. right and the best part is since the the music clips are placed externally you know you you can change the music clips uh, from time to time and you don't e even need to open up the flower and uh, make the changes right that's the best part when you want to play the the uh, you know sounds externally so just launching adobe flash pro cs55 it's taking a little bit of a time <laughs> it's taking a little uh, longer than I expected. It's coming up. Flash was always uh, pretty memory intensive, guys. 
and now I hear that Flash CS6 has uh, been launched. I'm yet to acquire it, guys. All right, so there we are, guys. That's that's the uh, mini MP3 player. Doesn't actually look like an MP3 player, but trust me, guys, very useful. Right. So this is the play button. This is the mute button. This is the stop button. Where did I actually get these buttons from, guys? You can actually go to um, you know components and then you can pull up a button you can pull up a button and you can change the label the way you want it to from uh, the component parameters guys anyways uh, also let me tell you what are the uh, instance names for these buttons the one at the top has been uh, given an instance name of btn underscore play this is btn underscore mute and the third one or the stop one is the btn underscore stop all right the labels are play mute and stop respectively right let me see what exactly is there in the timeline on the timeline uh, there's just one single layer guys and one single frame right let's see what else is there in the library i mean um, guys just the the button and the button components that's it uh, i have this symbol actually it's got nothing to do with the project let me delete it right and i think this is also something extra yep uh, it's got nothing to do with the project let me delete it too shouldn't actually make any difference to the uh, yep I think uh, yes these are uh, what are required right so guys uh, let me be sure that I've not deleted anything which is actually necessary let me hit control enter once again to render out to test the movie next 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 Yes, everything is fine, guys. Let me save it up again. Yep. And guys, uh, the only thing that we need to understand now is the uh, actions panel. Guys, uh, let's have a look at the stage first. The stage is 130 by 136. Now, that is something that uh, is entirely up to you. It goes without saying that you could have chosen a different size, a different color. Right. Let me open up the actions panel for you guys. And uh, I'll just breeze through the script, guys okay so guys these are few classes that get auto imported once you start writing the script okay guys here I've uh, actually declared a variable I and made it equal to zero all right I've declared another variable my songs and basically which is nothing but a list of the songs that are lying externally it's actually an array guys and this is the first uh, one soothing underscore music this is wallpaper dot mp3 this is kalimba dot mp3 basically just an array of songs a list of songs okay whenever you use an array guys remember soothing underscore music the first song is actually or the first music is at uh, index 0 this is index 1 this is index 2 okay now here I have instantiated uh, a variable SC of the type sound channel and guys uh, sound channel class is used to play and stop the sound here in line number 9 I have instantiated yet another variable of the type sound transform ST for sound transform and uh, we use the sound transform uh, class to manipulate the sound guys okay first things first the first thing that I've done is I've disabled the stop button and the mute button guys especially because since the music is not playing uh, there is no question of stopping it and there is no question of muting it so I've disabled it using the enable property guys and setting it to false right here you can see that to the btn underscore play guys let me tell you once again this is btn underscore play this is btn underscore mute this is btn underscore stop let me get back right i have added an event listener of the type mouse click and uh, when somebody clicks on the play button uh, function next song is supposed to play let's see what exactly happens out there the first thing that i do when somebody clicks on the play button is to change the labels for the play and the mute buttons the play button displays next instead of play and the mute button uh, displays mute just in case unmute is displayed right at the same time guys I'm enabling the disabled buttons out here if you remember the buttons were disabled here I'm enabling them so I'm, I'm using the enable property I'm setting it to true so btn underscore mute enable is equal to true btn underscore stop enable is equal to true all right so these buttons which were not highlighted actually become highlighted now okay now I'm set also making sure that if somebody clicks uh, you know I'm also making sure that the if just in case if the uh, mute button is emphasized by emphasized what I mean is it shows up a blue border all around if it is then uh, 
uh, set it to false right basically remove the uh, emphasized or the blue border right uh, not only that guys uh, I would want the SC to stop SC is the sound channel so basically just in case if there is any sound playing I would want it to stop right I'm also ensuring that the ST dot volume ST is the sound transform dot volume should be set to one just in case there is a complete silence if it's set on mute it will unmute things all right so and through the sound mixer class and the sound uh, transform property guys I'm setting it to ST so basically these two lines are responsible for unmuting the the music clip just in case it is set on mute all right so by setting the volume to one and through the sound mixer class in the sound transform uh, property I'm setting this to S ST and ST I've just set to one right volume is always between zero and one guys okay next guys what I've done is I've created a variable music clip of the type string okay and I'm setting it to my songs I I if you remember is zero see uh, I is zero so basically my song zero is basically the first song index number one for the array zero is this one the first song always has the index zero this has the index one this has the index two so when I say my songs I basically my song zero basically I'm referencing the uh, referencing the first uh, music clip this one right then I'm uh, creating uh, or declaring one more variable called my music of the types uh, sound guys and uh, I'm storing inside it uh, through the new URL request class guys music clip now music clip is nothing but the variable which is holding the first song because the I is zero right so basically I'm, I'm storing in my music the first uh, song of the array right and uh, guys next what I'm doing is I'm playing the sound in the channel so SC is the sound channel and my music dot play method is being used to play the sound in the channel guys as I said this is not a very basic tutorial uh, you know you may or may not understand many things that I'm saying in which case just use the script guys it's available for download and for people who understand the sound class properly who understand arrays properly this should not be too difficult to understand okay out here guys there's a uh, there's a if conditional if and else conditional it says if I which if you remember initially was set to zero is equal to is equal to my songs dot length so basically the length of the array if it is equal to my songs dot length minus one then make i zero else increment i by one basically um, it's a little bit of a logic out here guys uh, in a nutshell you know what is happening out here just in case the last song of the array is reached it will make sure that you loop back to the very first one the second the third and back to the first one the second the third and back to the first one okay and just in case there are more than three songs let's say five so one two three four five back to one one two three four five back to one that way uh, you know that kind of looping is happening uh, through this these three lines uh, 37 38 and 39 so it's responsible for the looping of the songs looping of the music clips rather these are not songs actually happens out here right mm. oh I actually lost it excuse me guys lost the script happens out here right and next see what happens in line number 41 uh, to the SC or the sound channel I'm adding an event listener uh, of the type sound complete so just in case the sound gets complete and nobody hits the next button okay you set it to play it, it plays and it the sound gets complete a function on playback complete should fire and let's see what happens when it fires you, you see if, if the sound gets complete the BTN the mute button and the stop button should get uh, disabled that's all that happens right and again I've added an event listener to the stop button guys and let's see what it actually does when somebody hits the the stop button a function called stop song it's actually should actually be stop uh, music clip should get fired off and let's see what happens uh, through the function stop song uh, SC should come to a stop SC is the sound channel guys SC dot stop method will stop the the music playing in the sound channel uh, I would want the label to change the, the the play button label to change back to play 
the mute button label should change uh, back to mute just in case it is not okay i would want the mute button to be disabled i would want the stop button to be disabled as well and i would want just in case the mute button is emphasized by which i mean if there's a blue border all around it should get disabled as well should get removed all right and in the end guys uh, i have added an event listener to the mute button as well let's see what it actually does it calls a function mute and let's see what the function mute does it checks if the volume is one basically if it is at full volume then uh, set the volume to zero or basically set the st dot volume st is a sound transform uh, uh, sound transform dot volume right okay variable st if you remember out here at the top st is a variable of the type sound transform i'll set it to zero just in case it is one and through the sound mixer class and the sound transform property i'll make it equal to st st is but uh, zero so basically if it is unmute i'll mute it i'll uh, make sure that the you know mute button gets emphasized basically throws a blue border all around and uh, not only that guys i would want the mute button label should be set to unmute because i've set it to mute so it should show up unmute all right otherwise other if the st dot volume is not equal to one else else or otherwise uh, set the st dot volume to one so basically if it is mute then uh, we're gonna unmute it so st dot volume st is the sound transform uh, variable guys variable of the type sound transform i'm setting through the volume property making it equal to one and through the sound mixer class and using the sound trans transform property guys i'm setting it equal to st st is but one so basically unmuting things guys playing sound back and then guys what i'm doing is i'm setting the btn underscore uh, btn underscore mute i'm uh, making it emphasize once again basically i'll be throwing a blue border all around the uh, mute button rather i'm removing the uh, blue border all around right and then i'm changing the label from an unmute to mute all right so basically guys 66 lines of action script let me save it save as cs5 save right so guys i know <laughs> a lot of uh, action script statements out there if you could understand things fine if you could not it's, it's fine nevertheless you can uh, download things from uh, my website http colon forward slash forward slash quality lessons dot net forward slash downloads the link is there in the description guys make full of use of it all right so just before i wind the tutorial guys i would like to show you uh, a published preview so control enter on my keyboard to test the movie i'm gonna hit the play button next 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 mute unmute I'm, i will allow it to play now guys let's see what happens you see the sound got finished and uh, everything else you know the mute and the stop button actually uh, got disabled let me hit the next button and the moment i hit the stop button guys uh, you can see that the play button gets enabled but the mute and the stop buttons get disabled so guys working to perfection all right so guys i hope you like this tutorial you found it useful and i hope to see you very soon with yet another flash and access to three tutorial or it could be dreamweaver html css tutorial you have a good day guys bye bye peace